This is the Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret, secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, here we are at Ash Wednesday. This day begins a journey. We journey in many ways at this time of year, and in our world, as Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, we journey from baptism onward into life, and we journey with Jesus to the cross. Our theme for this journey this year is our journey to the promised land. With respect to that theme, I thought it only fitting that we think about some of the journeys that we have taken. For me, that means trips into the wilderness, whether that be the wilderness of the woods or the wilderness of the city. Either one provides its own opportunity to think about what it means to journey and how we get that done. So let's think about a canoe trip. <laughs> let's look at our packing list and make sure that we have everything that we need and put aside the things that we cannot take along. The voice of our guide comes to our ears. We all have people in our world that have been there before and can show us the way. We have folks that will tell us what we are going to encounter, though there's no way to know for sure what perils lie ahead. But those people will care for us and support us as we go. They know what we will need for the journey. They can envision the experiences that we will have and know what to bring along so that we can face what comes with some sense of preparedness. Our task in the preparation is to realize that we really don't know all there is to know. That admission is okay. We don't have to know the way or the perils. All we have to do is trust that the voice of the guide as the guide, trust the voice of the guide as the guide equips us and shows us the way. Let's go over some of the strokes that you will need to know. This is a J stroke. This is a C stroke. This is how you draw, and this is how you pry. While the particulars about how each of our, of our journey may be individual, the general journeying can be very similar to those around us. Our guide will show us how to move through the trip with the most efficiency and in a way that will give us the least amount of trouble. 
Once we learn the basics, the trip becomes a lot easier. Also, this leads us to the realization that those around us and with us are going through the same exercise and using some of the same skills to get us through the trip. If and when we prepare for the trip as a community, we start to feel solidarity. We start to feel the support of the group. Even if we think we don't quite have it down, we still have some comfort that the skills of the family will be useful when we all work together. Okay, everybody, let's put on our wet shoes and get into the river. Time to go. Time to trust the others on the journey with us and get moving. There comes a time when we just have to trust ourselves, our guide, and the environment around us. We know we can't stay in one spot. We have to face what is around the bend. Sometimes that means a smooth, lazy river with lots to see. Sometimes that means that we have to stay focused on the water in front of us because there are rocks and trees that threaten to tip us over and wreck our canoes. But again, that's okay. We have people with us to help us. We have guides to tell us how to make it through. We have various skills and strengths within the group that will come useful, that will become useful whatever may come, and soon we get comfortable with our skills and our surroundings. We become more trusting that those that are in the boat with us have the skills to move us along on our journey. As the journey unfolds, that comfort level increases. It kind of lets us relax a bit and enjoy the journey. We start to notice little things around us and realize that we are part of an environment. We start to see the wonder of creation and understand that we're just a tiny part of it. We also start to see that this thing that God has entrusted to us is really way beyond our comprehension. And we ought to just trust that God knew what God was doing when he gave it to us to watch over. Okay, everyone. It looks like it might rain. Let's take a minute to put on our rain gear. No matter what we do, there will always be some sort of discomfort on our journey. There will always be times when things don't quite unfold the way we want them to. But that's okay too. Our guide has prepared us and we have what we need in order to endure. Every journey has difficult times, we know that. We also know that with the right preparation, we will be able to work through those times and get done what needs to get done and keep going until we get where we need to go. Here we are at our campsite. Let's all work together to gather enough wood for our fire and put up our tents. We need to get going so that we can eat before it gets dark. We will all be fine if we chip in. Half of you will gather wood and the other half will put up tents. We like to think sometimes that once we get where we're going, we are done with what we have to do. However, most of the time, where we have arrived is simply a stopping point. Once we refresh ourselves and we have taken on nourishment and fuel, we must pack up again and continue on. So it is with life for sure. Our life is a journey with all that comes with this little picture that we have spent painting for you. Our life is a journey that mirrors closely the journey through Lent from ash to light. Our life, our equipment, our guide, and our destination are all given to us as a gift. God loves us so much that he has given us everything we need to get where he leads us to go. We have the strength and the experience to not only get where we're going, but to invite others 
and lead others to get there as well. It all works together as one and comes together in a constant reminder that is Holy Communion. This table is where we refresh for the trip ahead. As we come forward to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion on this Ash Wednesday, our foreheads will be marked with the cross of Christ. Instead of water and oil as was used in our baptism, today our foreheads will be marked with black ash. And instead of hearing the words, child of God, you have been marked with the cross of Christ and sealed by the Holy Spirit forever. Today we will hear the words, child of God, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. <coughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, the materials used and the words shared may sound and feel differently. They actually aren't all that different. And both of them remind us that we are God's children, not just on the day of our baptism, not just during the season of Lent or this journey, but forever. Blessings to you in your Lent journey this year, and may God continue to richly bless your journey in faith, a journey that has no end. Thanks be to God. Amen.